Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicat. In this video, I want to talk about the proper way of sharing Power BI reports with your audience. There are different ways in uh, um, sharing Power BI reports. I'll talk about a few of those options, but uh, the main option that I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be the best practice way of sharing Power BI reports through apps with your audience, uh, and I'll talk about the licensing aspects of it. So let's jump into this video. Uh, so um, when you work with Power BI, when you build your reports in Power BI, you use normally Power BI desktop as an environment to go and build your reports, uh, create your reports, and then you save your reports as a PBIX file or recently as PBIP. Uh, but we would not share the report with our audience using that PBIX file. We will not send that file to them because first they will need a, a version of Power BI Desktop installed on their laptop to open it. Uh, secondly, um, uh, Power BI Desktop is a developer tool. Uh, you don't expect users to open the report in a developer environment so that they can make a change uh, and something goes wrong. Um, even if they can install it, it would not be the right uh, way to do it. So what is the normal practice? We usually publish our reports in a hosting environment called Power BI Service if you are using Power BI online version. If you are using Power BI um, on-prem version, you would use Power BI report server. Uh, when you use Power BI online version, after you publish your report into that hosting environment, into the Power BI service, then you would have the option to share it. And there are different ways of sharing it, but I'll talk about the Power BI app way of sharing, which is the best practice, and I'll explain why it is best practice. So let's switch into my uh, screen. Here you can see my screen. Um, so to, to publish your report into the Power BI service, first you'll open Power BI Desktop, you'll click on the Publish button, you have to log in into your account uh, in order to get that uh, working, but after you log in, you'll see the list of workspaces that you have, and then you can choose which workspace you want this to be published on, and you'll choose to publish. For example, I'll choose to publish this one in this workspace. Um, once the report is published into that workspace, then you'll go to that workspace. Now in this workspace, I have plenty of reports. If I just filter it for the report side, uh, let's say the type is a report uh, and also paginated report. Um, I would have them both, paginated report and report. Um, so here you can share them individually, like on each report you'll have this little share button. Uh, but sharing using this is not what I would recommend because when you share it using this method, first you have to share each individual item uh, one by one. Like if you have 10 reports, you have to do 10 different sharing and then manage the sharing under each separately using manage permission, things like that. It would not be easy. The other problem is that when you share it this way, if you make a change as a developer, the audience would get impacted immediately. There is no separation between your user environment and your developer environment. Uh, so first, you'll need to publish your uh, reports into a workspace, into an organizational workspace. I will not recommend using my workspace because my workspace is like my document. It's like my download folder in your laptop or in your um, desktop machine. Uh, it's not a good environment to use for uh, deployment of uh, reports that needs to be uh, in an organization. So first, you'll need to be in a workspace, like for example here, you see I have a list of workspaces. This is one of the workspaces that I have and uh, all these reports are published there. Uh, now, when I have these, I can uh, share the reports with my users using workspace sharing, like I can give them uh, access to the workspace. Here, there are different ways of accessing, uh, giving access to the users. You can make them uh, viewer, um, but contributor member admin would be more like a developer access. However, even though we do have a viewer access option here, it is not something that, again, I would recommend. Uh, especially because this viewer level access uh, means that the user will get access to all the reports and um, visualization items you have in your workspace and you might have like 20 reports but still like five of them are work in progress. You don't want to share all of that. Using viewer access, the user would have access to all of that. That is one problem. Another problem is that you still have that, um, you still have that um, 
and uh, not separating the dev and user environment. So they both are in the same place. It would be much better when you have like two separated environments because when everything is happening in the same workspace, um, if as a developer, I go and change something. All the users with viewer access to the developer to that environment would also get impacted immediately. So, what is the right way of sharing? The, it's Power BI apps. But the thing is that you uh, build it from the workspace that you have you are in. So, I'm going to switch into my screen again. Let's switch into the screen. So. Back into my screen, this is my Power BI environment. I'll go to the workspace that I have. Um, inside this workspace, I have mm, a lot of reports and I want to create uh, an app basically to share this with my users. Uh, to create the app, you'll start with this create at app option. Uh, when I create the app, there are three stages of creating the app. First, name of the app, some description about this app, what this is, for example, this is marketing reports or anything like that. You can have a logo for the app and a theme color so that when users are in that app, they can recognize that they are in that particular app. Um, some settings about who are the main contact person for that. And this is the first stage. The second stage, which is an important stage, is where you add content into your app. Like, uh, what are the reports in this app you are going to add? And uh, you can add content from your workspace. So here I can say, for example, all of these reports, not all of them, but I just want to share some of these. Like, for example, this is one of the reports. Um, like, this is another report. This is another report as well. I'll just go and add a few of these reports here so that, um, so that it gives you some idea what it is, right? Uh, and this is also one of the good things about app is that you can have in your workspaces like hundreds of reports, but only add to those that you want in the app so that the rest are more like a work in progress report. So these are my reports, then I can organize them. I can add sections here. I can say, for example, this is sales, um, let's say, yeah, this is internet sales reports because sales might come from <coughs> two different channels. So I would say this is internet sales reports and I would move this up to, to be under that. So you can actually build like categories like this. So move this up as well and I'll add another section. Let's say this is, and I'll move this over here. I would call this reseller sales. And I would say these are also moved up into that. You don't necessarily need to have a section. You can build your app absolutely fine without a section, but this is also fine to create a structure like this. You can even add uh, like a link to a wiki page, something like that. So you can build it exactly like a menu for your application. Once you build this, the next stage, the last stage of creating the app is the audience. Here you would choose uh, what type of audience you have. You might say, well, I do have only um, one audience. This means that all the users that I'm sharing with, they will have access to all the content in this app, or you might create different audience. For example, I can create one audience saying that this is my internet sales users. And I would say internet sales users will see everything in internet sales, but I would disable the reseller sales view. You see, I make that hidden. And then I'll create another audience here. I would say this is for reseller sales. And for them, I would hide internet sales part, but I will keep the reseller sales visible. You can create as many as these you want. Uh, after creating these, this is the place that you would go and assign users to your audience. Like here, um, you would add their user ID, but I would not recommend using user ID. I would recommend using Office 365 groups um, so that when people add to teams and uh, to the groups, they automatically get access to that. So once you create this, then you hit the publish app. Now, when you, when you publish app, two things might happen. Depending on the setting you have in your, um, in your uh, admin tenant, the app might automatically get installed for your users if that setting is checked in the tenant settings for, uh, in admin portal. If it is not checked, the users first time need to go and install the app. Uh, so I'm, for me, I did not have that checked, so I'm going to install that app so that you see the experience. Now let's say I am one of the users. I'll go to the app section 
of Power BI, or you can send them that link directly. That is also another way that they can install the app for the first time. Uh, so as a user, I'll go to the app section here. I might have some apps already available for me. Uh, and then I click on get apps. Here I'll sh I should see all the apps available for me that I can use. And this one that I just created is already there. I can click on it and this installs the app. This is just for the first time that it installs it. After this, I would be able to go to the app just by a single click from the app section. Uh, so you see, this is my uh, app view. I have this uh, two different sections and the report under each section. Uh, because I'm the developer of this app, I see both of audience. But if I was one of these, uh, I was a user in one of these audience, then what would I, what I would have seen was not this. It would have been something uh, like only only one of these uh, views. So that is the thing about this app, and and it is a fully interactive app, of course. Like if I go to a report that has some uh, interaction in it, like for example here, I can select something. Everything is fully interactive. Uh, and the slicing and dicing happening like a normal report. This is a read-only view for your users. However, what is the main point of this app setup uh, compared to um, other ways of sharing that I mentioned before, like for example, sharing each item individually or sharing through the workspace. Sharing it, each item individually app is a better option because you are sharing a multiple object at the same time. Uh, sharing through the workspace app is better because you can have this separation of the workspace and the environment that um, you are um, giving to your users. So developer and end user environment are separated. How this is possible? When you create the app, uh, it will create a copy of your um, it will create a copy of your reports and um, paginated reports or normal Power BI reports. It will create a copy of those from the workspace. Uh, the main data set is still, the main semantic model is still in the workspace. The reports and um, paginated report, whatever that is created as a copy, they will read their data from that semantic model that you have in your workspace. This uh, connection means that any time the data gets updated, this app has the up-to-date data. So you don't really need to update the app to get the up-to-date data. On the other hand side, because there are two different copies of the report visualization elements, if as a developer I go and change the report in the workspace, it will not change the copy of that for the end user in the app until I choose to update the app and the update of the app is the update of the structure. So let me go to my screen again and show this how this is happening here. So uh, I'll go to Power BI again, and this time um, oh, I have to sign in again. So let's sign in. So this time I'm going to first make a change in that uh, in one of the reports and then I'll show you the user view that is not impacted and then I'll go and uh, update the app. So uh, this is the app. I'm going to open that app in another tab and here I'm going to that workspace. So in this tab, I'll have the workspace view. In the other tab, I'll have the app. So the app in here, which is loading, um, Yep, here is the app. In page seven of this report, for example, in this app, you see that I have these columns and everything like that. Let's say I decided that I don't want sales year or year on year percentage uh, in, this, um, in this table. So I can go to that report and it should be this report, here it is. I'll go to that report in the workspace, which is my developer environment, and then I'll go there and decide to remove that. So I'll click on edit the report, uh, I'll select the visual, and I'll remove this last item, right? Here it is changed. I would also make some formatting changes so that it looks more um, appealing in terms of the view. So let's change that to a style that is more like bold headers, something like that, right? So I've made a change and I'm saving this change. As you see, the report is saved. If I go to the reading view of this report, this is exactly what this looks like. From the app point of view, however, when I refresh this app, uh, this app 
view will not change because this is the user view of the content. So user still see this as exactly as it was. Um, you see the column is there, the formatting is as it was before. If there was any update in the data, it would have appeared here. Updates in the data automatically appears in the app. So when does this change happen? And this separation means that as a developer, I can go and make any changes that I want without worrying about users get impacted. Once I have made all the changes, once we have done all the testing and we are happy with what we have created, then we go through updating the app, which is more like deploying it to the user. And so then I'll go to my workspace again and I'll click on update app button which would bring me to the same create app uh, environment. I will not make any changes in this create app environment. I'll keep everything like that. I'll just hit update app. Uh, and usually it takes uh, some time to, uh, to have the update on the end user, but I can just refresh it so that we see if the changes happen. This separation of the user environment and dev environment is one of the most important things that the app provides for you. You see the changes happened right now. Uh, not only that separation, but also using the app, you get uh, this nice UI that you can build and uh, you can share multiple objects at the same time. And the last thing about app is that how the sharing, how the licensing for that works. So if you are using, uh, if you are a small business, if, let me switch to this. If you are a small business and if you have only a few number of users in your organization, you are probably using Power BI Pro uh, for sharing per user uh, license plan. App works perfectly for, with that. You can share it with the users. They need Power BI Pro account. You need Power BI Pro account and it works perfectly fine. If you are sharing it in a larger organization where you have thousands of users, then you are probably using one of the Power BI Premium options, um, P1, P2, which is also equivalent to F64, F128, or higher options. In those cases, your workspace is associated with that premium capacity. And when you publish your content into there, when you share this through the app with the users, your users do not need to have per user licensing. If you, are using on a, if you are on a premium capacity, your users can use Power BI free accounts through the app, consume the content that you have provided to them. Uh, so this was the, um, the way of sharing Power BI uh, content with the users. You can use it also for end, uh, for end users who are not in your organizations using B2B organizational um, um, and outside of organization external sharing. That can be also an option that you can check in uh, tenant settings. Uh, and this is the best practice to share Power BI reports. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Power BI and Fabric. Until the next video, bye.